Dear students, welcome to EPG Partshala. Myself, Dr. Manoj Kumar Sharma, and today we shall be discussing National Forest Policy of 1988. In this paper, we will, we will be discussing the history of the National Forest Policy, the features of National Forest Policy 1988, and the reasons why this policy should be revised. So, students, let us discuss National Forest Policy 1988. before discussing the topic let us see what will be the learning outcomes of this topic the basic purpose of, of this uh, paper is to discuss the national forest policy of india from the beginning till date to discuss what are the features of national forest policy 1988 and what are the laws which are supporting which have been enacted for implementing national forest policy and also to find out what are the lacunas what are the drawbacks of national forest policy of 1988 and also of course to highlight the need for a revision of national forest policy 1988 and it is in this context that we will be discussing the inception of national forest policy right from 1854 till the present date and uh, we will also be discussing the laws the enabling legislations which are dealing with forests in india that is indian forest acts of act of 1927 forest conservation act of 1980 and scheduled tribes and other traditional forest dwellers recognition of forest rights act of 2006 uh, before starting with the the foreign uh, the forest policy of india let us first uh, see some facts as per the forest survey of india 2015 report The forest cover of country is 21.34 percentage of the total geographical area. And if we find the coverage in comparison to uh, the 1991 figures, we find that the forest cover has increased from 6 lakh 34 thousand 938 square kilometers to 7 lakh 1673 square kilometers. That means, as a matter of fact. due to various efforts and perhaps the awareness and the implementation of the forest policy the forest cover of the india has increased to 21.34% of the total geographical area of the country when we talk about forest policy what should the forest forest policy contain and what are the what is meant by it and what and what are the objects of foreign policy forest policy forest policy basically is containing set of principles or guidelines which are adopted by any government for attaining the objects objects may be that uh, the economic objects objects may be the environmental objects or political objects in the present scenario when we talk about forests we the prime thrust is on the the environmental protection but if we look at the forest policy right from the beginning the focus of the forest policy has been shifting from one thing to the other initially it was the exploitation of the forest then we talked about the rights of the forest dwellers and now the uh, primary focus is the conservation of the forest so as to protect the damage to the environment when we talk about forest policy there are various things which are included in it and which i have to be considered like timber supply timber requirements wood pricing forest taxation international trade etc etc if we look at uh, uh, the uh, genesis of uh, forest policy we find that the development started in 1854 when lord mclaren who was a superintendent of forests in burma who was then the part of india he proposed some restrictions on unchecked exploitation of by by uh, of forest by private parties when he submitted his report on uh, agriculture uh, improvements in agriculture now his report formed the basis of uh, lord dalhousie's efforts lord dalhousie in 1855 he made the outline of forest conservatory uh, forest conservancy uh, he submitted a memorandum to government of india which was termed as the charter of indian forests and they have started the development of forest policy though the forest policy first forest policy came much later but we saw that after the lord dalhousie submitted the memorandum of government of india on forest conservancy the thereafter we find that indian forest act 1865 that was enacted the under that act the regulation started the imperial forest department was created in country and uh, the purpose of this act was basically the 
uh, asserting the state monopoly on forest resources. Basically, if you see that uh, when this 1865 Forest Act was enacted, the purpose at that time was, as I said, to uh, establish state monopoly because it was discussed at that time and it was felt at that time by the Britishers that forests can affect climate, they can affect the rainfall and they can of course uh, affect the, uh, the trade also and therefore the property regime is uh, also affected by them. That is why they thought that it would be convenient and desirable for them to have control over the forest resources. The another act that is Forest Act of 1878 was enacted. The Forest Act of 1878 enabled the British government to classify forest as reserved forest, protected forest and village forest. So far as the reserved forests were concerned, uh, protected forests were concerned, they did not give any right to the local uh, uh, people or, or people who were living near these uh, forests to tap the resources of the forest that is grazing, their minor producers and major produce. They were not, their rights were declined and this, this historical uh, a policy has continued for years. The dwellers, the forest dwellers, or the uh, people who are living in the vicinity of the forest, their rights have been uh, traditionally, historically, uh, been deprived. And it is in this context that we will be discussing later on. The 2006 Act has been passed. The Act itself recognizes this fact. Uh, so far as uh, uh, the these, uh, Forest Act of 1878 is concerned, that extended the sovereignty of the Britishers over the wastelands. Uh, the, then we find that uh, the forest policy, uh, I mean the act also talked about the collection of forest produce by forest dwellers. It was regulated and state control was firmly established over the forest. And if anybody found violating it, that was declared as an offence. The next development we find the first foreign policy of India, that is for, forest policy of India, that is forest policy 1894 was brought, that was uh, adopted. Now this was the first formal policy and the emphasis of this policy, as I said the emphasis of the forest policy has changed over time. At the time when this forest policy was adopted, the wood requirements of industry and uh, commercial, uh, other commercial requirements, they were increasing and therefore the Britishers were interested in the commercial exploitation of the forests for, uh, for generating revenue. And that is where the thrust of the first policy was commercial exploitation of forest products. And in this context, they promoted state custodianship and uh, uh, of course, uh, the policy did what? It actually encouraged the Jamidas to convert open forests into agricultural lands so that the earnings of the state, that is earnings of the Britishers can be increased. So as I said, the purpose basically was not the conservation. Now today we talk about conservation. At that time, the purpose was to convert forest lands into agriculture, number one, for increasing the agriculture production and number two, for enhancing the revenue of the state. Forest policy of 1890 divided the forests into four categories that is uh, the, for those forests which require conservation that means those forests which are situated at the hill slopes whose conservation is required for protecting the uh, soil for protecting protection from the floods and other things so those were required to be protected and conservated second category which consisted of valuable timber and therefore they needed to be exploited commercially. They were of gain, commercial gain to the, uh, to the administration at that point of time. And third category of forests, which were yielding low quality timber, they were meant to meet the demand of the local people. And the fourth, uh, fourth category was pastures and the grazing land, which people could use, but there were some restrictions, regulations on the use of those uh, uh, pastures. This forest policy of 1894 had various lacunas. For example, we had the problem of shifting cultivation. After we have tapped one resource, one land for agriculture, the, there was because now it is not yielding much uh, uh, crops. So what we used to do is we used to keep that land barren for some time and then we show, would shift the uh, agriculture to some other area. Therefore, the forests, they were converted continuously into the uh, agricultural lands and therefore this was this policy did not uh, this actually promoted it it did not stop this practice there was no definite share of geographical area allotted to forests under this policy uh, no uh, guideline was there to control and regulate the forests owned by native states and jamidas 
of course they, as I, as i said the purpose was commercial uh, exploitation therefore there was no emphasis on environmental stability and forest education therefore the policy suffered from various drawbacks and it is in this context when the country gained independence a uh, new forest policy of 1952 was formulated because the changes had taken place since 1894 which were required to be taken into consideration the forest policy of 1952 that uh, emphasized that one third of the geographical area of the uh, country that is india that should be covered by forests so forest cover should be there of at least one third of the total geographical area of the country the policy of 1952 also identified that there are national needs for conservation and to protect the land from soil erosion and the river banks also and therefore the policy tried to achieve delicate balance with the between the exploitation of uh, forests as well as the economic interests and the conservation of the forests so the policy extended the forest cover as we said to one third of the total uh, land but then uh, it also identified that uh, the defense needs the industry needs the needs of paper and plywood etc they have also to be met for the from the forests and therefore they tried to achieve some delicate balance between both the objectives the policy of 1952 uh, stressed that the adjoining village communities should be restricted to use the forest but in the interest of the nation as a whole so their entry and their their usage of the forest produce was restricted to an extent forests under 1952 uh, policy they were classified into four uh, categories uh, that is protected forests which are required to be conserved required to be protected for uh, maintaining physical and uh, climatic conditions the national forests which were intended to meet the demand from defense and communication industry in particular village forests which were required to meet the demand of the forest dependent communities and of course the fourth category the tree lands so what the indian government did is it uh, nationalized the forests which were earlier lying with the zamindars so since uh, 1952 policy also had some of the drawbacks that is where the new national uh, forest policy of 1988 was adopted the main object of 1988 uh, uh, forest policy was environmental stability and also to restore ecological balance therefore maintenance of environmental stability was identified recognized and it was thought that it could be done through preservation and restoration of ecological balance it was also identified that there is a need to check soil erosion denudation uh, of the catchment areas of rivers lakes reservoirs and that is required to be done in the interest of soil and water conservation for mitigating floods and droughts and of course shifting sand dunes was a big issue uh, for example in rajasthan and other coastal areas therefore there was a need to check that as well as to prevent desertification so the need was felt to have a new policy and the policy was enacted with some of these objectives this apart another uh, important objective of the policy was to increase the forest cover so the policy aimed at increasing the forest cover to one third of the total geographical area of india but the policy also recognized that uh, the, there are requirements of the industry regarding fuel wood regarding fodder regarding minor forest produce and uh, requirements of the village uh, communities and tribal populations and therefore the increasing demands increasing requirements they are required to be met from the forest so with this context in view the policy aimed at increasing the productivity of forests so that these needs can be met the new policy also aimed that uh, massive people's movement should be created especially with the involvement of women so that these objects of the national forest policy can be achieved now let us see what this uh, national forest policy has done uh, article uh, the paragraph 5 of this policy of 1988 deals with the essentials of forest management it say it, it provides that the forest need to be protected and conserved and also we need to improve the productivity of the forest produce and it also keeps into mind as we said that uh, so far as uh, uh, hill slopes are concerned the catchment areas of rivers and lakes are concerned they need to be protected and their forest cover needs to be increased there and then as we uh, said the as the population of the country was rising therefore 
that needed increased the food production that is where it was contemplated in the forest policy that good and productive agricultural land should not be converted for should not be used as forestry that should be discouraged this apart the policy contemplated establishment of networks of national parks centuries and reserves the policy also uh, dealt with the provision of uh, uh, sufficient fodder fuel and pasture especially in the areas which are adjoining the forest in order to meet the requirements of people who are dependent upon the forest the policy also uh, aimed at afforestation it said afforestation afforestation should be intensified with special emphasis on augmenting fuel wood production so as to meet the requirements of the country if you look at the strategy adopted by the uh, forest policy of 1988 uh, we can uh, look at the area under forest as we said number one one third area we said that uh, forest cover should be increased to one third area so far as mountains and hills were concerned the aim was to maintain two third area under the forest so as to prevent soil erosion and land, land de uh, degradation and also to ensure the stability of the fragile ecosystem of the himalayas the another important strategy for forest management was a forestation forest, uh, uh, social forestry and farm forestry so therefore the policy recognized that a massive need based and time bound program of a forestation and tree planting that should be adopted and that program should emphasize particularly the fuel wood and fodder requirements because these requirements increasing requirements have to be met similarly the policy uh, was aiming at planting of trees alongside the roads alongside the railways so that green cover can be increased the policy also strategized increasing of green barriers in urban areas and it was uh, contemplated that idle uh, community lands in villages that should be developed for crops and fodder resources and the government was expected to provide assistance in such programs it was also aimed that the land laws should be modified to facilitate uh, uh, growing of fodder plants grasses and legumes etc so that uh, uh, these are made available for uh, meeting the needs of people now let us see how to manage the state forests and what measures are the policy is proposing the national forest policy of 1988 aimed at or it uh, the gave the solution that schemes and projects which interfere with the forests especially the steep uh, slopes of mountains catchment areas of rivers and lakes etc those projects and schemes should be severely restricted that means the permission should not be granted if any permission is to be granted that should be after careful scrutiny and it was uh, uh, contemplated that uh, without the approval of the plan by the management plan by the government no forest should be allowed to be worked out it was uh, uh, contemplated that the central government should issue necess necessary guidelines to the states in this regard and should also monitor the compliance of those guidelines the necessity to enhance forest cover and forest uh, productivity was also identified uh, if we look at uh, the uh, rights and concessions especially when we look at the rights and concessions granted to people who are living near the forest we find that the policy recognized that the grazing rights are important and but the grazing rights of the local inhabitants or the forest dwellers should be proportionate to the carrying capacity of the forest and in order to optimize it the increased investment was required the policy also uh, talked about that the tribals in particular the scheduled tribes or the forest dwellers their rights and duties uh primarily for the bona fide use of the communities which are living within the within the forest they should be identified and their rights should be granted to them moreover the domestic requirement of fuel wood for the minor forest uh, and uh, forest produce and construction timber that should be made available to the forest dwellers and scheduled tribes at reasonable prices and uh, it was also contemplated that substitutes of wood should be found out because the wood is required to be made uh, made available for railway sleepers construction and other purposes so the substitute should be found out so that uh, the pressure on forest that can be reduced so as to reduce uh, uh, the uh, use of forest or the pressure on forest it was also contemplated that the alternative sources of fuel like lpg and solar energy should be used this uh, forest policy also talked about wildlife conservation because we all need 
Forest management must also take special care of wildlife conservation. Forest policy 1988 also uh, talked about or uh, provided for diversion uh, regarding uh, regulations regarding diversion of forest lands for non-forest purposes and it actually prohibited that forest land should not be used for non-forest purposes and uh, if anything has to be diverted then it should be subject to careful examination by scientists and the social uh, scientists so that the social and environment, environmental costs and benefits they, that can be analyzed. And it was uh, also pointed out in the policy that construction and industrial work must be inconsistent with needs for conservation of trees and forests. So far as mining was concerned, it was contemplated in the policy that those who are beneficiaries of those activities, those who are allowed mining, they should be responsible to repair and revegetate the area which is used by, the, by them for mining. And without a proper mine management plan, no mining lease should be allowed. The policy also discussed the interrelationship or the dependence of the tribal people on the forest. And therefore, the policy encouraged the association of tribal people in protection, regeneration and development of the forests. The policy identified the problem which we discussed that the first policy had, that is of shifting cultivation. And therefore, the policy identified that the shifting cultivation is of course adversely affecting the environment and it is also adversely affecting the productivity of land. And therefore, the policy identified that Agriculture should be done only in the areas which are already affected. The emphasis should be on increasing the productivity, not on shifting cultivation. Then uh, it was all so far as uh, encroachment and forest fires were concerned. The policy identified that the incidence of forest fire has increased over a period of time. And therefore, efforts should be made to curb these fires and also the incidence of encroachment on forest land that was also increasing and that was also taken into consideration uh, while drafting the policy and it provided that no regular, uh, regularization of existing encroachment should be done. If we look at uh, uh, the further provisions, especially uh, when we talk about provisions relating to forest based industry, uh, the policy stipulated that uh, forest based industry should raise the raw material which is needed for meeting its need from its own resources and that the, uh, in those industries should provide employment to local and uh, local people or indigenous people so that uh, uh, the trees can be raised as, as raw material. Uh, and it was also provided that outsiders should not be given clearing regarding the use of the forest without clearing the security, uh, scrutiny with regard to assured availability of raw material. Uh, it was also stipulated that uh, industry should be encouraged to use alternative raw materials in place of forest produce and that national, uh, natural forests should not be made available to industries for undertaking plantation or any other activities. The policy also stipulated that farmers, particularly small farmers, should be encouraged to grow wood uh, on marginal and degraded lands which is available with them. It was also stipulated in the policy that forest extension programs should be carried out and they could be, they would be successful only if we engage the community. So therefore the value of forest that should be identified and that should be, uh, public awareness should be created regarding this. The, uh, for this purpose the policy stipulated that institutions like Krishi Vigyan Kendras training centers, etc. regarding silviculture and agriculture techniques, they can be made use of and the benefits and the optimum uses how the land can be put to, that can be learned and that, that the programs should be launched through these kindras. Policy further uh, stipulated that uh, forestry education on a scientific basis should be encouraged and it is in this context that the policy provides that post-graduation research and professional excellence that should be encouraged and for this purpose the skill development should be done. The policy also stipulated that in order to invite qualified and experienced people in forestry, their uh, competence, the professional competence, status, all these things should be taken care of so that to motivate personnel to join the forest services. The policy also uh, pointed out that there are issues regarding the data collection. Since the adequate data regarding forest cover is not available, therefore the policy stipulated that a survey of forest resources in the country should be done. 
so that the reliable data on various aspects of forest management is made available. The policy without registration would not, it would not be possible to have the desired results. Therefore, the policy mandated and moved that appropriate registration should be undertaken, which should be supported by adequate infrastructure so that the objectives of policy can be achieved. The policy also stipulated investment in forestry research and that the finances should be made available by the respective governments. Now, having studied the policy, let us also discuss in brief what are the enabling legislations which can be used for implementing the objectives of the policy. If we look at the Indian scenario, we have various legislations and most important being Indian Forest Act of 1927. This act of 1927, it aimed to extend the state's control over the forest as well as it also looked at the diminishing, at, it also provided for diminishing the status of people's rights uh, over the forest use because it was identified that the increasing uh, infiltration of the people in the forest that is adversely affecting the forest. So therefore this uh, act of 1927 uh, alienated the village communities from their age-old association with the forest. If we look at uh, Foreign Conservation, Forest Conservation Act of 1980, this act basically aimed at conserving the forest with the view to avoid degradation of the environment. Therefore, the act stipulated that uh, the center permission is necessary to practice sustainable agroforestry in, in forest areas and it also targeted to limit deforestation and to conserve biodiversity so that the wildlife can be saved. The act basically serves to check the diversion of forest land for non-forestry purposes. As we discussed in the beginning that in 2006 an important legislation that is scheduled tribes and other tra tra traditional forest dwellers recognition of forest rights act was passed. This act identified and recognized that historically the injustice has been done to forest dwelling scheduled tribes because their entry and their right to use the forest land that was forest products and forest land that was restricted historically right from 1894. And therefore, the act provided for the rights of scheduled tribes and other forest dwellers regarding the use of forests for their purposes. So therefore, this act vested the forest rights and occupation in forest lands in forest dwelling communities especially scheduled types which are dwelling over those forests which could not be recorded in the past. And the act also made, uh, act also provided for strengthening conservation of, uh, conservation regime of forests but in consonance with ensuring livelihood and food security of the forest dwelling tribes. As we said that there are some, uh, the forest policy of 1988, if you look at forest policy of 1988, there were various lacunas in that forest policy. Uh, the policy though talked about checking soil erosion, but it does not suggest how that soil, uh, soil erosion is to be checked, no measures are provided. The policy also uh, does not uh, lay down the guidelines on afforestation. Sometimes what has happened in India that we have planted those plants in the, to, under the afforestation schemes which were not congenial to the environment. Therefore, no such uh, programs, no such guidelines were there in the National Forest Policy of 1988. And uh, if we look at which uh, uh, the targets, the targets regarding one third area or two third area in hills, they should be flexible enough and they should be on the basis of scientific analysis. The policy does not look at that uh, perspective also. And if we look at uh, uh, previous few years, we find that forest fires have been very frequent in India and they have damaged the flora and fauna, they have damaged the local environment, they have caused irreparable damage to the forest. National Forest Policy of 1988 did not do much to deal with it and therefore there was a need to revise the forest policy and it is in this context that uh, Indian government desired a new forest policy and draft of the forest policy was given in 2016. That draft is still under consideration, has not been finalized but just to have a brief uh, look at that draft, uh, the new draft that is 2016 draft that is consistent with the previous uh, policy so far as the one third area is concerned or extending the forest cover to one third of the ge uh, geographical area but it does not talk about maintaining two third area under forest in hills and in mountains. This uh, uh, policy of 2016 uh, provides for a community forest uh, management uh, mission and under this it is proposed that the management of community forests, uh, uh, management of all the forests, they should be brought under this community forest management mission and uh, uh, they should be, there should be involvement of the Gram Sabha. 
which should be managing these resources. The policy also models the levying of green tax and it also aims at growing trees on for outside the forest lands and for wood industry. So the policy, new draft policy is under consideration. It only the time will tell uh, what changes are made in the desired policy. Let us also briefly look at the judicial perspective. Now we, as we see the draft policy, uh, the National Forest Policy 1988, which is uh, uh, there on the, uh, which has been enacted by India, which currently is dealing with the, the forest conservation as well as use of forest resources, but then. The Uttarakhand High Court in Protection of Forest Environment versus Union of India in 2016 directed the Union government to revise national forest policy. In a petition filed before it, it was contended that many forest fires have taken place and the government is turning a blind eye to it. The, and the na na national forest policy of 1988 has not done enough to check these uh, wildfires. Therefore, the Uttarakhand High Court directed the Union government and the state government to deploy 10,000 fire watchers in Uttarakhand during summer season. Court also uh, directed the Union of India to formulate a new forest policy which would aim at forest management, conservation and sustainable development. The court directed the Union government to notify the new policy within six months. Uh, but uh, there is another issue. If you look at the Farj Mining Private Limited versus Union of India 2011, uh, a decision given by the Supreme Court of India. There is some gap between the forest policy and the legislation dealing with it. In this uh, Lafarge Mining Private Limited, land was allotted for limestone mining to Lafarge Mining Limited in Meghalaya. It was contended in the petition filed that uh, this was illegal because it violates the provisions of national forest policy. If you look at national forest policy, national forest policy says that uh, you need to obtain the permission of the uh, central government before uh, using the uh, allotting the land which is situated in ecologically sensitive areas or in hills and therefore if we look at the law as a whole the national forest policy it was contended that there is a gap between the principles formulated in nfp and also the legislation dealing with the same and it was contended that uh, it should be declared that national forest policy should govern the grant of permissions under forest conservation act of 1980 the court agreed with the contentions of the petitioners and court held that the principles or guidelines mentioned in the national forest policy they should be read as part of the provisions of environment protection act together with forest conservation act the court found that there is a gap between the forest policy and the law which is enacted therefore the court mandated the government the central government that a national regulator should be appointed and that national regulator should deal with the projects enforcing environmental conditions for approvals and to impose penalties on polluters so dear students today we have discussed the features of national forest policy 1988 we have also discussed the draft of forest policy of 2016 but we have found that the implementation of the policy has not been up to the level. We have discussed the role of the Supreme Court and the, the Uttarakhand High Court regarding the national forest policy. I hope that the discussion will be fruitful to you. Thank you.